Welcome to the Great Lakes Smoke Podcast Show. What we talk about basically is the love and the passion of cigars, pipe smoking, tobacco, alcohol, brothers chilling out and having a good time, laughter. No <laughs> well, how else are you going to you know, enjoy a nice bourbon? And I you kind of went animalistic it. on uh, tobacco buying. You? And the Rocky yeah. Patel Pure and Simple. I don't know, that, that thing just tastes so good. And welcome to another Great Lakes Smoke Show. Oh, are we excited for tonight. We want to welcome all of you joining in. Um, we got a really, really exciting guest that uh, we are really, uh, really fortunate to have and honored to have. Um, meantime, all you newbies, get yourself settled, grab yourself a pipe, grab yourself a cigar, and whatever spirit you're drinking, sit back and enjoy. We got some good stories ahead of you on this one. Uh, let me introduce the crowd to you. Um, you won't see you half of tonight. them, but we'll get you through it. My name is Ron Pecorini. This is my brother, Bob Pecorini. The man behind the scenes, the the architect of the technology board, Mr. Kyle Gesso. Good evening, everybody. He's hanging out on the boat, as you can see. He's <laughs> def definitely social distancing the himself. Love boat. The love boat. But, he's, but he's all alone. What love? What love? <laughs> he loves himself. Hey. There you go. Hey. You, you have to have self-love before you find true love. All right. Oh. Just make sure we see both hands on the table. Huh? <laughs> hands up. Hands up. There you go. And the man uh, from Florida. The one, the only, yes. the man we call Cousin Frank. Hey, What's up, up? What's up, Frank? I'm at the lounge. And he's hanging at the lounge. Definitely social distancing from away from everybody. Not bad, Frank. And as you, uh, some of you know and some of you don't know, Cousin Ooh, Frank comes on at the end love. of the show. And he puts us on the uh, specialty of Stump the Chooch. <laughs> and, and what that is is we give away a free pipe this week's pipe is from the chicago pipe club um great thanks to the president tim garrity it's uh, here he goes check himself in and uh nice beautiful clean very thick walls you can look at that all righty and, That's our uh, giveaway tonight. Yeah, and it is a El Cala Algeri, and it's number yeah. 254. So that's going to be the winning uh, pipe tonight if you can stump Cousin Frank. I think Frank is going to be a long one tonight. You, no one stumps me. Uh, no one asks me the questions. Oh, wait, man, I asked. I got you last week, though. Yeah, so hey, they got hey, you yeah, last we week. got you. But... Uh, <laughs> What we do is the first person on Facebook to answer the correct question when it's to the audience wins the pipe. But uh, again, that's Stump the Chooch, and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. Chooch! <laughs> In the background tonight, we have a big Chicago pipe audience. We got uh, the uh, ex-president and good friend, Alan Boyd. Uh, on his left. We have the board member, Mr. Jeff Rice. Hey. And we have another board member on his right, Mr. Glenn Baskin. Hey. Full house here in the studio. <laughs> we love it that way. Anyway, folks, did you, did, did get you your tip. I'm sorry. Did I miss that? I think we did. Didn't we? The new president. Here he is, Tim okay. Garrity. Hey. There we go. So, anyway. Um, Folks, get yourself a pen, paper. I know you're going to want to jot down a lot of notes uh, with our special guest information. We'll be also giving you information along uh, with special dates of uh, meetings that we know of. And maybe you might hear a tobacco or two you might like. Maybe you might be interested in getting a pipe. So we'll get all that information to you. And if you like, you can also email us, uh, which is Great Lakes Smoke Show at AOL.com. 
And if you like to uh, send us a Facebook private messenger, please do. If we can answer anything, help you to get some questions answered, we'll try to do that for you. And if you just like to just send any kind of uh, good criticism, we'll take that. Send the bad stuff to Kyle. Yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll follow that he's under a, uh, G for uh, accordingly. <laughs> Uh, sorry, we, we you wiped them out. What was that, Kyle? I said I'll file that under G uh, accordingly. Uh, you know, for garbage. Uh, yeah. <laughs> don't do that, buddy. I like the garbage. G, bro. Group thinking, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we have a couple of sponsors, a few sponsors that we like to do, uh, start off that because we kind of get things wrapped up with our guests, and uh, we always have to let the, the you know give a little airtime to the sponsors. Kyle, take it away. First sponsor we have is DAV Cigars out of New York. Uh, our friends Val and Armin are putting out uh, great cigars and have a uh, couple of new ones hitting the shelves this year. So keep a lookout at your uh, local brick and mortars uh, for their cigars. Um, and if you cannot get them at your local brick and mortar, um, hit them up personally. They have contact on their website. They will get you in direct contact of where to pick their cigars up online um, for their pricing. Uh, next, uh, and my keyboard stopped working, but our next, uh, sponsor is, there we are, RNA Treasures out of Tampa, Florida. Uh, these guys, uh, Randy, uh, got, and those two guys have, uh, pipes and pipes in a warehouse, uh, full that they are just going to continue to go through. They probably have enough supply to last them a lifetime and anybody a lifetime, uh, for buying them in there, uh, reasonably priced too you can't find a better deal and then yeah. our last sponsors that we have is chicago land pipe collectors club as you heard there is a house full of them at ronnie's uh pseudo studio for now uh, <laughs> and uh, they are having a great time there and uh, they are the pro one of the proud sponsors of our show absolutely and if you, too, would be interested in, in joining uh, us as a sponsor, reach out to us. We'd like to talk to you, and we would like to promote what you got going on. So uh, anyone and everyone is welcome. Of course, we're always looking for something to keep the show going. That's, that means an envelope. Keeping the lights on. That's what we're doing here. <laughs> That's for you city slickers. You know what that means, right? <laughs> Inspection time. <laughs> anyway. You got to pay uh, for the protection. <laughs> Well, without further ado, um, the one, the only, the, the, the master pipe carver himself, the father master mason, father of the flame, Lee Eric, welcome hey, to the hey, show. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. How you doing, Lee? Just bumping along, living the dream. Living a dream. Yeah, down well, here in Chicago and living a nightmare. So how well, can I tell you? <laughs> That's your problem. Keep it down there. <laughs> well, I was going to send it up to you since you got the dream. Maybe they're looking for the dream. <laughs> I don't think they're going to find their dream up here. Uh-huh. Well, it looks nice and sunny out there by your window. How are things going for you up there in uh, Michigan land? They're good. Uh, we haven't got a whole lot of the virus problem. We got a little bit, but uh, it isn't as bad as it is in other places. But the lower third of the mitten part of Michigan is where the, all the problems are. So, And those people are coming up here. They're bringing it up to us. But uh -oh. Oh. We'll survive. Uh, they're all running away from the big cities and where the action is. So, unfortunately... You are yeah. in a spot where people want to run away to, you know? And, exactly. and the winter's coming, so they're going to be using off that uh, that ski uh, jump that you used to play with as a kid. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I, I don't think they want to go there. They might want to go to some of the ski areas, but uh, they get hurt pretty bad. They've tried the big thing. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you can't get hurt on that. I heard you, you and I, was it your brother? You guys used to jump a lot? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, my junior and senior year in high school, uh, I skied for the Ishpeming Ski Club. Now, Ishpeming is just a uh, town oh, it's about 10 miles west of me here. The National Ski Hall of Fame is there. 
And uh, that's where the, all of this started. Um, so it's, it's, it's not like it was when I was a kid. I mean, everybody was ski jumping. Like for athletes, no. They took in the fall league, you get a bunch of guys together and you form a football team. Yeah. But mm. in high school, uh, you form a basketball team, you got 10 or 11 guys. Well, the rest of the athletes got nothing to do all winter. There you go. Yeah. There At you least go. you had something to do. They don't play hockey, you know. So you ski. The only thing I can do is snow plow. <laughs> he actually means with too. the snow plow, not with. No, 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 not plowing, plowing, but yeah. snow plow is the term to just like when you bring your skis this way. I know what the term is, but you're not doing that. Time. <laughs> I thought you were doing snowballing. You're just rolling down the hill. <laughs> no, actually, I didn't fall too many times, but I only went once, and of course, my dear friends brought me to the intermediate uh, slope. Uh, nice. Up at the Playboy Club in in Vernon, <laughs> and uh, it took quite a few hours to get down. Oh <laughs> uh, well, there alcohol involved. There was a lot of alcohol involved. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Josh, that's, that's the problem. Down the hill, yes. <laughs> they call it an antifreeze up there. <laughs> I got home from uh, the army in, in uh, the summer of '61. In the fall, I ended up. Uh, as a ski instructor at a local ski area. And the people that learned how to ski while they're drinking wine couldn't ski when they were sober. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those that learned how to, how to ski when they were sober couldn't ski when they were drinking wine. I tried it once. <laughs> it was a disaster. <laughs> well, you know, with alcohol, you don't feel the hurt when you fall, you know? At least well, not until the next day. <laughs> sleep already. You're half a nest of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, um, tell us a little bit of how you got into pipe smoking and then eventually graduated into pipe carving. Give us a little bit of a history so this way people know and... Um, and, well, and can you explain about all the shows that you've been to. We know you're very big in Japan and Singapore. And let us know. We're going to give you the show. No more questions. Go for it. Well, it all started back in December 1958 when I got the French in the Army. They had cigarettes rationed on it. <coughs> and so we, most guys didn't get enough to... Uh, get through a month. Those guys that didn't smoke, they they fill their ration card on payday and take them downtown and sell them and make money. So there wasn't any extra ration cards for them. So by the end of the month, a lot of guys were smoking pipes. And I had monkeyed with one in high school, but nothing real serious. My dad was a pipe smoker. My grandpa smoked a pipe once in a while. But uh, we could buy long champs in the PX. I don't know. We were paying a dollar and a half or two fifty for those leather co covered pipes they make in, in France. I still got, I think, five that I brought home. Wow. Um, I brought two of them home that have oval bowls with oval tobacco holes. Mm. Now those carbon up as a round hole. Those two narrow ends on each end of it carbon up quicker. Hmm. So what, I don't think anybody makes a uh, oval tobacco hole anymore. I see once in a while a, a oval bowl. But that, that was uh, the beginning of pipe smoking and I'd rather even then, I'd rather smoke a pipe than a cigarette, but it was cigarettes were just convenient. Right. And that's part of what was the downfall of the pipe smoking when they started making uh, factory made cigarettes. It was easier to smoke a cigarette than it was to smoke a pipe. 
But then uh, I, I smoke the pipe off and on every once in a while for many years. And I was in a profession I knew was going to come to an end. It was physically demanding. It was extremely uh, competitive. Our tension was high. Um, but I knew that was going to uh, come to an end. I could see it coming to an end. And I was helping a friend that had purchased a pipe store in Green Bay, moved it to Marquette, and put it up in Marquette. And I was helping him do that. The guy from Green Bay was here, and the question of pipe repair came up. And he knew a guy in Minnesota uh, that was trying to sell a pipe repair business. So I got in touch with this guy um, and went over, spent an afternoon in his shop, and we made a deal. And he moved all the equipment and all his supplies and everything over here and spent about 10 days here with me, showing me what to do. The best, that's one of the best pieces of advice I ever got in my life is what I got from Dave. He said, you can't go into any hardware store anywhere in the country and go to aisle one, two or three or wherever and find one tool made for pipe making. That's true. You've yeah. got to be inventive. Hmm. Be inventive. And that's always stuck with me all, all these years. And I started that and really had no idea I wanted to make fun. I didn't think I was good enough. But it got to the point where I thought I would give it a try. And I did a lot of thinking about it, um, you know, just going over in your mind. And there were a number of questions I had to answer for myself. One was, how am I going to make my pipe stick out from everybody else's pipe? When you walk in a new pipe store, the first thing is you look at all the pipes. All right, now I got to catch your eye. What's the second thing? You want to see the pipe. You want to pick it up. How it feels in your hand. Got to feel good in your hand. Then it's got to have a, be comfortable in your mouth. Thin, thin bit for most people. Last but not least, certainly maybe even first, it's got to be a good smoker from the first bowl. Now, this is back in the 80s. Back then, everybody talked about Dunhill, what good smokers they were, the old ones, the oil-cured ones. Mm -hmm. Well, all right, now we've got to oil, figure out oil curing. Well, I had a big box, and I mean a big box, full of old pipes, all used wood. I took them out, threw the bits away, reamed them down the wood, start oil curing, and putting a bit in and giving them away or smoking them myself. And I mean, it took me about two years or three years to develop a process. In the beginning, you pack the pipe, you get it lit, and four pucks later, you're, you're throwing the whole thing in the garbage. All right, now you're back to step one. And I just kept changing things, changing things, changing until I came up with uh, something that worked. Well, no, it works on, on uh, uh, used wood. What about good wood? Well, I bought 75 pieces of the cheapest dryer I could find. I think I paid $2.50 for uh, Ebishon from J.H. Lowe, and this goes back to when they were still in New York long before they moved to Georgia and then came west bottom. Um, I got 75 pieces and I started making pipes and I gave them away with a, with a uh, evaluation sheet. And 
I gave most of them away. Those I sold some, but not very many. And I sold it for like twenty or twenty-five dollars. I threatened them with Guido that I'd send Guido if they didn't send me that cheap guy. <laughs> and I got a lot of seats back. I still got them in the file over here. Uh, that's when I knew I was on to something. It worked with the new wood. Then I started buying good briar, plateau briar from Randy Wiley, was my first guy um, down in Florida. And then uh, Kim West got a hold of me one time, and a bunch of uh, U.S. pipe makers went together and bought a whole container full of burlap sacks full of plateau briar from Greece. Wow. When the container hit the East Coast, they broke it all up and shipped it off to whoever ordered what. And I got five bags of Greek briar. I still got some down in the down in my shop. From that original order, you still have that same briar batch from that order. Yeah, that's yeah, I forty years. Forty years. Well, before I got rid of all of that, I found Mimo. Uh huh. I got connected with Mimo. Well, I put that that briar. I, in fact, in the in the documentary, I say something like, "You're lucky to get two smooth out of ten with that wood, but Mimo briar, I get nine or ten smooth pipes out of his wood." Wow, that's I mean, a big difference. Yeah. 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 Well, and Mimo goes back. Before Mimo, with his father, the people, Mike Butera went to Italy and found people. And Mike Butera has been buying from people since Christ was a corporal. <laughs> <laughs> Long before I got there. Um, but they, people and Mimo were, were willing to listen to what the briar what the pipe maker wanted. The first time I met him was at your show in, in at, at Pheasant Run. I had a uh, year before I had uh, talked to Teddy Knudsen, who was a friend, uh, and asked him to send me a dozen pieces. How much, you know, would he sell me some and send me a dozen? How much I gave him cash and I got some. Oh, was it gorgeous? Oh, was it gorgeous stuff. And the next year I walked into, the, I couldn't wait for Chicago that year. I walked into the, we were still smoking in the bar back in those days. Um, I walked into the bar and Teddy's at the, at the bar drinking beer with, with a guy I didn't know. I walk up and I said, Teddy, oh, that, that wood is so wonderful. I need some more of that wood. How much can I get? And he said, well, why don't you buy it from this guy? He's the guy I get it from. And it was Nemo. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. From there, the rest is history. So that's kind of how it all got, you know, well, came along. What's the last trip that you made to Mimo's now, back in Italy? Uh, the last time I was in Italy was when we filmed up uh, for Father of the Flame. Oh, okay. So it's a few years now. Yeah. Um, so that was like four years ago, five years ago, something like that. The, the Father of the Flame guy said um, there was four of them over there in Europe. Um, and they had flown into Copenhagen. And that's where they got the, uh, all the footage with uh, Lars, well, they did Nana first because he was in Copenhagen. They went to Danish Pipe Shop in Copenhagen. They went to Lars. Then they went down to uh, Germany. And I tell you when it was, that was the year the, the World Championship was in Cologne because they went to Cologne and they filmed at the World Championship. And that's when they filmed at Peter Heinrich. Then they came down, they went to France first, they went to uh, Chacon, had a great time. They really had a good time with Andre. Uh, 
Then they came uh, in the northern Egypt. Now, Mimo is very close to France. When I go to see him, I fly into to, uh, Nice. And we're 20 minutes to the Italian border and then 20 minutes to Mimo's house from there. So well, he's that's on the, the northwest he is. He speaks Italian with a French accent. <laughs> um, <laughs> and they went to uh, Savinelli, and they went to Costello, and they went to a couple other Italian pipe makers. And we met at Mimo. The morning I got in there, they, they showed up that afternoon. Um, and then we, we went up uh, to Tuscany and, uh, and spent, I don't know, four days or five days following these guys digging the briar and taking it out and burying it in a hole and wetting it down and covering it with dirt and then digging it up, putting it in the truck, take it down to that farm, put it out in a pile, wet it down, cover it with with plastic. There's a lot of work goes into a piece of briar before we even get it. <laughs> and that's the nice thing about that movie. It shows you how much work goes into one pipe from the ground to your mouth. Oh, yeah. But that was the last time I was there at Mimos. I've been there, I don't know, five or six times in all. He had a 40th anniversary party for the briar cutting you know, business for his dad. Uh, that was before people got dementia real bad. But he also passed away too, right? People, he passed away now? Yeah. Yeah, people passed away, yeah. Um, that was a sad day. Um, he was a great guy. I gave him a pipe. <laughs> you gave him a pipe? Uh, yeah, I gave people a pipe a few years ago. And I'd given it to him oh, late in the morning. I, I brought two or three or four, and I said, Nemo, which one do you think your dad would like? He said, well, show him all and let him pick one. So we let him pick one. He picked one. He took it into his apartment and had lunch. He comes out after lunch. And he, but by then, he was only cutting in the morning. Okay. And he comes out, and he's smoking the pipe. There nice. you go. Good honor. Yeah. Yeah, and I didn't say anything, you know, and I just let it go, let it go. Finally, about middle of the afternoon, I said, Mimo, does he like the how it smokes or anything? I mean, does he like the pipe? And Mimo said, because uh, I was looking for something about the oil field, for some kind of a comment. And so Mimo asked him, they talked to him a little bit, and Mimo said, he said, it's different, not bad, just different. Oh, okay. was, uh, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. Well, different it wasn't bad. <laughs> <laughs> he smoked it too when I went over for that anniversary party. He smoked it that day. One of the days, hell, we were there three days. He smoked it one of those days. Nice. So he must have liked it. And he had some pipes, let me tell you. He had large pipes. He had Teddy Canutes and pipes. He had Kronowitzes. He had all those big guys, all those big, big shot Dane guys. It was complete with years added to it. That's it. Yeah. Hey, Lee, I do have to say that what you told uh, said a little bit ago, a lot of things you had to pay attention to. You you have checked off every single one of those as you've uh, grown as a pipe maker. I mean, every pipe you make is awesome. I can identify your pipes from across the room. Um, they're just, you, 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 you've you um, hit the highest plateau there, buddy. Uh, Thank you. I, um, I've always told myself, and if you notice, I'm not on the board much. I don't, I don't socialize a lot online. I very, I, I couldn't tell you the last time I was on another pipe maker site. It's, it's not a I bad. don't want to be influenced even subconsciously. Uh, how I develop my own style, I don't know. 
It came from inside and it came out here. I don't know how I did it. Well, your creativity is what's shown. And you said you got to make something different, what's different from everybody else's. And again, I can identify a pipe of yours from across the room. Your style is un unmistakable. And thank you, Alan. Um, I, I strive for that all the way through my career. Now, I'll look at some other pipe makers' pipes friends of mine and stuff, and I'll see something that they do, and I think to myself, how can I make that different? Yeah. How can I put that into mind? Uh, one thing um, I do is, is uh, diamond chains. Uh, if you notice, these, as they call themselves, artists and pipe makers, they don't put... Um, <laughs> a little narrow, narrow it down and widen it up. Yeah. Those are all straight back. Those, that's, I, I, uh, to me, it's just something different that I do. I do a lot of different things. And, and a lot of the new artisans remix the same shapes of which are common. Um, there's only a few people, that, in my opinion, um, that put a little, I, I think you make the biggest uh, alteration, but like people like, um, uh, what's his name? Um, gosh, just the right, uh, Jeff Grayson. Jeff Grayson. Jeff, Jeff puts a nice, nice spin on his shape. He puts a nice, makes it a little different. Um, who's the other kid I'm trying to think of? Lives out the forest. Lives where? Lives out the forest. Um, I'll think of his name later. But yeah, there's, I, I, the artisans nowadays are just banging out regular shapes and yeah. wanting to get $800 a pipe. <laughs> yeah, well, good luck yeah. with that. <laughs> Most of these internet, I call them the internet pipe makers. Yeah. Before, before the internet, they didn't even know there was pipe smoking. <laughs> <laughs> and, and all they do is they're phrasing machines for the Danes. And they, they, I mean, how many times can you make a blowfish? Right. You know? And I just saw one on, online on, on Facebook here just recently. Uh, a guy made basically a ballerina. Mm -hmm. And he said, this is my version of the ballerina. Well, it looks just like both. Yeah. Both first one to make it. So what's the difference? I mean, good grief. Be <laughs> inventive. With all the manufacturers yeah. out there today, who would you say probably makes the best pipes in your, oh. opinion? in your opinion? There's so many of them. Kurt Balby makes great pipes. Kent Rasmussen. Tom's Tom Eltang's hand, handmade ones. Of course, there's Teddy Knutson. Jeff Grasick is a great guy. I love that guy. I think I think Jeff makes Jeff has done it right. Look what Jeff has done. Not only does he make pipes, he makes machinery for for pipe making. He went into a thing with his brother buying demos and in and doing cheaper pipes. He got his brother involved. I mean, that's being invented. Sure, yeah. That's being invented. Um, there's other guys that I know that are that are uh, pretty good pipe makers. Uh, for the money, how can you beat Mark Kinsky and Tim West? Oh yeah. You know they both have been in it a hell of a lot longer than me. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, Kyle. They were they were some of the big guys, and that's another thing. Back when I got started in this whole pipe thing, there were there was a pipe magazine, PCA, I think it was called. Yeah. It was a little little book, but yep. Reader's Digest type. Um, and there were all kinds of pipe makers in there, American pipe makers. Um. 
One I remember, I don't remember all their names. McCauley was one that was in there, but one I remember from Iowa was uh, Waddell. He left the business because back in those days, you couldn't sell a pipe for 50 bucks. Huh. Lots of guys. Uh, Erickson from California. He's back, I guess. I don't know. He was, he was big. Uh, Mike Buterra, if you can get him to make you a pipe, boy. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> And he's got a lot of good briar too. I could go down there and hold them up and steal stuff. <laughs> hey, Lee, we're going to change a little bit on the story because uh, we have several questions from the audience. And Kyle has the list for you, and he's going to put that together. And okay. uh, if you don't mind, our listeners have uh, would like to you know, pick your brain a little bit. Yes. <laughs> I'm not sure they want to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, forget about the pink and uh, we'll just do it. <laughs> so, Kyle, are you ready? I've got, a, well, I've got a local pipe smoking friend that's a psychiatrist, and he refuses to get inside my head. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you get into his head, though. <laughs> Dangerous territory, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. So, first question from All right, the audience. I'll go for it. Yeah, first question from the audience is, um, what do you recommend as a first pipe for a first-time pipe smoker? Thank you. Um, there's a number of them. Uh, if you want briar, I suggest Stanwell or Savinelli makes a good one. It's they're, they're cheaper, but they're great smoking pieces. Um, yeah, very good pipes in the seven hours. Yeah, if you, the problem I find with them, I don't, I haven't seen the Stanwell that's uh, Italian made yet, but most of the factory made pipes are very restricted, and the restriction is all in the preformed bit. Yeah. So if you can get that opened up a little bit, you know, as much as you can, it's a really a good smoking piece. Outside of that, a corn cob is not a bad way to go. It tastes different, but it's cheap. If you don't like it, what do you got? 10, 15, 20 bucks. Is so, so you like the cobs a little bit then? I got a cob right here. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Yeah. You know, Was that a legend? A long time, well, a few years ago, uh, Phil Morgan's wife bought a pipe from me at a pipe show. And she bought it at Kansas City. And then next, Columbus, I told him in Chicago, I said, Phil, bring your pipe to Columbus. We'll have a picture taken because I, I got that in a, a, the goodie bag at the, the Kansas City show. Mm -hmm. I said, I'll bring this corn cob down. We'll get our picture taken. Me smoking the corn cob, you smoking my pipe. <laughs> nice. So there's a picture out there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. All right, Kyle, we got another one. Yeah, one, one more we got coming through. Uh, they want to know. Have you ever done anything with meerschaum, or is it just no. straight briar? Straight briar. I am very, very traditional. Nice. It's briar. I the reverse calabash thing. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, um, me either. The the uh, filter <laughs> thing. I don't understand. Uh. But no, I have not done anything with Mersham. I've done nothing with uh, Morta. I have not tried strawberry wood. Paulo Becker did like strawberry wood. I'll tell you that much. Really? Oh, wow. We had a discussion in Japan one time at it, about it. And Paulo really liked it. Hmm. It's, 
It grows right next to Briar. I saw it. It grows a berry that looks like a raspberry but tastes like a strawberry. I ate them. <laughs> um, and it grows a burl. And I couldn't tell the difference. Nemo can tell the difference, but I can't tell the difference in the burl between strawberry and, and, and Briar. And they grow right next to each other. It's all mixed up. Any more questions you have, Kyle? That uh, we hit more. them all from uh, the audience there so far. So that's the ones I've yeah. seen, and I hope we uh, answered all everyone's questions so far. So if you have anything else, uh, keep them coming. Let us know. We'll uh, we'll get them. We'll get them in uh, into Lee and get his thoughts on it. Even if you don't like his thoughts, we're still going to ask him. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's all good. No question. No problem there. So. Let me see here. Go ahead, Frank. Frank. Yeah, Frank's got uh, some. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, when you start off a, a, an idea, how long does it take you to execute from that beginning of a, that thought of an idea of a pipe to actually completing it? How long is that process? Nice. Yeah, good question. Some of them can happen quickly, but some of them take some time to evolve. Um, because I'll finish a pipe. What, like this one I'm smoking. Um, I've done this pretty much a number of times. Uh, leaving a little bit of the burl down the front and I've also taken it right down the shank. Mm -hmm. um, outside of that part of the bowl it's the same bowl that I use on the pipe I call a loom now that's the only pipe I've ever named the shape I've never never named anything else I've got a picture in fact it's on my website of a loom and that's the loom gotcha. well this pipe it's got the same bowl without the burl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see, so I've taken that basic, basically it's a brandy bowl, and, and just evolved it into other things. I've put it on an oval shank. I've put it on a round shank. I've put it on a square shank. You I've like put glutes in it. Do you like uh -huh. doing rustication on that side, like that? No, there's there's no rusticating uh, on any uh, of these. This is the outside of the burl on here. Okay. Oh, all right. That's that's the very outside. Um, no, these are both pretty nice pieces of wood from Mimo. Um, there's no pieces. No blasting on there. This. Is blasted. Oh wow! Okay. And it is blasted. Believe me. Look wow. at the bird's eye. Wow. Wow, that's pretty really amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Keep holding that up a little bit. We got a couple of guys who want a closer look. That's awesome. Wow! Very nice. Very cool. Is that on the <laughs> website? <laughs> is that for sale? Uh, no, that's one, <laughs> that's one of my smokers. This pipe should have gone in the barbecue box. <laughs> um, oh, you could put it in a box and send it to me. <laughs> yeah, I sure. um, That's beautiful. It had, a, it had a bad crack somewhere over on this side, and I, I've got a dental pick with a long needle, real thin needle. I stuck it in that crack. It went all the way into the tobacco hole. Really? Oh, yeah. So I know, well, I need a new pipe anyway. <laughs> I know somebody Talk, <laughs> talking about new pipes. We also have a uh, an audience member, Ian Simpson, says, "How can uh, how can he purchase one of your pipes? Would you like to do your website or your uh, whatever he, line you have?" He can he can go on the website. My website is v as in Victor O N dash hyphen e r c k dot com von eric.com von eric.com 
There you go, Ian. We got that information to you. Also, uh, we have uh, uh, the president of the Richmond Pipe Club, uh, David Ellsworth. Mm. He would like to uh, make an invitation to you to join him and come down and do uh, maybe a, a little show, an exhibition or whatever for the Richmond Pipe Club meeting at Sutliff next year, the first weekend in October. So if you like that, if you check your schedule, that the invitation from him and Sutliff is out to you. Thank you very much for the invitation. And I will be there if it does not conflict with Japan. Yeah. Okay. Japan, Japan is always September, October, November, or the first half of December. Okay. Now, one, one year I did, back in the old days, I did go to uh, Richmond, and Sunday after the show was over, I went out, stayed in the, uh, at the airport in the hotel overnight, had a six o'clock in the morning flight to Detroit, got on a flight and went to Japan. Wow. <laughs> now, uh, I have the same problem with Kansas City. It conflicts when it when because Japan is different. They have pipe clubs that are maybe two blocks apart. And every year, the pipe club goes to a different city in Japan. I've been to Sapporo. I've been to Osaka. I've been to, to West Park. I've been all over. Uh, but every fifth year, it comes back to Tokyo. The sponsoring club, they announce who the club is going to be for next year at this year's show. And they assign the date. But when the club gets home, they have to end up changing the date because they can't get a venue. So it's any time from the middle of September to the middle of December. Yeah, hopefully you won't come conflict with it and we'll see you there. <laughs> yeah. I would like to come back. I would like to get to Sutcliffe too. But we'll uh, see you at the Chicago Pipe Show they, in May. Well, I'll be there. I mean, <laughs> make my reservation. When you, when you sign a contract for the, for the venue, just tell him, you know, give this kid his room, too. <laughs> David's listening. Time. He'll take care of you, and he'll get you the room at the Omni. We'll mm -hmm. join you. <laughs> Good question. Anybody else have a question? Shoot it out there. And uh... I would really like to go back out there and see Linwood. I haven't seen him in a while since his show. I'm sorry, who was that? Linwood. Linwood Hines from Richmond. Oh, I mean, okay, all right. Yeah, that's not one I from here, but you probably know the Richmond crew, no problem. Um, and we can only hope. Yes, David, we can only hope that we'll all be there next October, twenty twenty one. Yeah. So um, obviously, four or five years ago, this whole uh, father uh, of flame. How did that all come about? I mean, that was a huge success hit in the pipe world. How did that come about? It's uh, been eight years ago now. That long ago. That's how wow. long it started. Yeah, it was seven years ago last summer when it came out. Uh, I've got a uh, nephew in lives in Grand Rapids, Michigan, a doctor there, and so is his brother. And the older brother, Matt, was at a party. And he saw two guys sitting there smoking pipes, talking. And he knew one of them. He knew Rush, who was the producer. The other one turned out to be Chad, who was the director. And he went up to them and talked to them. And he said to them, you should get in touch with my uncle up in Marquette. He made pipes. Well, they did some research online and found me and I had a in February I had a conference call with Rush and Chad and their original uh, offer 
was they wanted to make a 20 minute documentary on me. Now, little did I know, Chad is in the, the business full time. Rush isn't, but Chad is. Chad had never made a documentary before Father of the Flame. That's his first one. And I actually refused. I said, no, you have no idea what this whole thing is all about. It's a worldwide thing. I said, you have to come to Chicago Pipe Show from Grand Rapids. It's only, what, three or four hour drive. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I said, you have to come over there, and that will give you an idea of what it's all about. This is the biggest one in the world. There's over 300 tables. Well, they came over that year, and they were there for, uh, I guess they got in late Friday night, and they were there Saturday, and I think part of Sunday morning, and they went back. And they were blown away. They were just, they had no idea what this was all about. Just like Frank and Kyle, when they came down to the show the first time, yeah, blown away like anybody. It's the greatest, yeah. best show in the world. Yeah, it's, yeah. it was amazing. You're, so, um, you're walking around in awe of, like, there's so much there. Like, I couldn't believe that there was something like that uh, that existed in the country, let alone right here in my backyard. <laughs> so. exactly, exactly. Well, they were the same way. They didn't know anything like this existed. And it was that summer then they came up here and spent about four days here filming. And that's where you see all of the footage from the, around here. Um, they got all that in one weekend. And then it just kind of evolved from there. I encouraged Chad to come to uh, Japan one, one time to see the opening ceremony of the uh, Japanese national championships so there's guys on stage in tuxedos and white gloves and a big gong and you haven't got a clue what they're saying but you know it's all pomp and circumstance yeah. and ceremony and every once in a while they're hitting the gong and um, <laughs> then when they light up you can just see the smoke rise in the room like this you know? <laughs> so he came over that year and it was a one year and it was kind of a, well, I don't know, it was kind of a battle to get him into the, they didn't want him walking around in the room uh, disturbing the smokers, is what it was. Uh, he, with his camera, hell, he could, he could sit in one corner and get all the shots he wanted, which he did pretty much, I guess. <clears throat> but we did get him into it. And that's when he got... Uh, uh, the uh, the um, interview with Tokotomi and the interview at um, with Saab Suge and all the Japanese stuff came from that one weekend that one week we were there uh, mm -hmm. Sykes Wilford had set up a young man Ryota Shimizu who was no um Ryota was born in L.A. to Japanese parents who were working in L.A. for the Japanese government. So he grew up in L.A. When his father retired, they moved back to Tokyo. Shimizu stayed here for a while, but then he went back to Tokyo, too. And now he runs his, uh, his own business. He's a translator. And Sykes set him up. Because Sykes hires him when Sykes goes over there to help him get around and do his interpreting for him. Um, and he set up uh, Ryota to help us get out to Tokotomi. Um, and he did all the interpreting in that interview. That's uh, Ryota's voice you hear speaking English and Japanese uh, in that interview. Um, there was uh, Per Bilhal from Sweden was with us that day, and, and Michael Pertot, and Rex Pogenpal, myself, Chad, and Ryota all went out to Tokotomi that, that day. 
<laughs> it was the same thing at, uh, at Sugi. Except there's, there's a lot more uh, interviews at Sugi. Uh, the only thing that made the, uh, the video or the documentary was was Saab when he shows him shows you a pipe case that looks looks like a pipe case but it's a knife. That was a whole afternoon of, of interview. Is there yeah. any any um, thought about making a second version of the? Uh... What they're going to do, and they've already started. Actually, they've put up, I think, three short vignettes. Because there's so much they've got that got that should be seen, uh, they're putting it up. They've got a U YouTube channel, and there's there's more from the Danish pipe shop up there, and I I think there's three altogether. I forget what else they've put up, but every once in a while they're going to put something up on YouTube. Um, as a short vignette. Uh, they, they've they got enough footage. They could have a mini series, series on television. <laughs> oh, jeez. Wow. Well, um, if, it seven, wasn't, if it wasn't for your suggestion, that movie would never have been as good as it is. No, it would have been a short 20-minute documentary about me. How goddamn boring would that be? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even watch that. <laughs> oh, Lee! <laughs> you, <laughs> you lived it. The rest of us haven't. Oh, by the way, uh, Lee, uh, our friend David uh, over there in Virginia, he says uh, Linwood speaks well of you very often. So he, he oh. does mention you all the time. Good, thank you. And thank you me. have another friend of ours down here, Ralph, part of the Chicago Pipe Club. He says uh, he's come up and visit you, and I uh, wanted to give his greetings to you and uh, wish you all the luck, and uh, hopefully he will see you soon. Hopefully, at least by next May. <laughs> Let's hope so. For yeah. sure, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Tim? Uh, Lee, I had a question. You know, a couple of years back, you were doing a lot of work with Suge, correct? Uh, Suge is my distributor in Asia. Um, I was just curious, what are your thoughts on the Kishru pipes? The Kishru pipe, you want one? <laughs> 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 you mean one of those? <laughs> oh my God. Uh, hold hold on, Lee. About, Lee, hold that up again. Style. It's a non European style pipe. You know, I'm always curious to see different uh, smoking traditions from around the world and hey, yep. hey lee can you hold that up again uh, we didn't get to see that real quick uh, that's just one i've got about three or four of them look it, look, it looks those. like one of those opium pipes <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm always whenever i bring one home i'm always worried about coming through customs <laughs> i'm not worried about leaving <laughs> one over there that's a little bigger. It's in the showcase, a little bigger than that that I got in Singapore. I've got three or four of these things. I've got I've got pipes here. A guy from South Africa gave me a pipe. I don't dare smoke it. I don't know what the wood is. You know. Might I'll give you our address where to send it to. Uh, <laughs> we have. <laughs> you know, if you're looking to get rid of any of those uh, basket pipes of yours. We are taking a collection, just to let you know, on a serious note, for our military men and women uh, overseas, we are uh, putting together a pipe, some cleaners, a, a little, uh, some ash, uh, matches, and just a little thank you from the Chicago Pipe Club and the Great Lakes uh, Smoke Show. Um, in October, one of our uh, representatives, Jerry Feliciano, who knows you also. Briar Nation. Briar Nation. He is in, uh, let's say, Afghanistan or somewhere in that area. Can't, uh, Can't do, reveal where, real, it, is, where but... it is. But um, there is a bunch of, uh, of smokers, so we are doing pipes, cigars, 
and any kind of paraphernalia in that uh, family to say. Yeah, because they, um, they can't get their hands on that stuff overseas, so they rely any- on us, yeah. us to help provide it for them. Right, right. A little, a little gift for those who are giving so much for our country. Yeah. Red, white, and blue. It's, mm-hmm. it's up to you, but, you know, we can talk off air. And David Ellsworth wanted to thank you personally for, uh, for giving, you the, uh, giving us the process of the documentary. He truly enjoyed that. So thank you from David Ellsworth of the uh, Richmond Pipe Club. Okay. Well, they, when I watch it, I see, of course, I see a different documentary than you do because I got all the backstories. Uh, yeah. You got all. You actually know all the backstories, yeah. so you definitely. So, I know some of them. I I wasn't with them when they went to uh, Pipestone, Minnesota, and to South Dakota. I wasn't in on that. I don't know those two guys. Um, where else did they go? Oh, well, I wasn't with them when they were up in Denmark with Nana and, and Lars and. The, Danish pipe shop. Uh, they have, I mean, there's so many people they could have done. It could have been uh, in Denmark by itself. Kurt Balby and, and uh, Kent Rasmus and Teddy Knutson. Yes, Pranowitz. Now there's a story. Everybody doesn't know the story about yes. Yeah. But when, when uh, his wife, you know, died a few years ago with Alzheimer's or dementia. And when she, when she was diagnosed, yes, quit making pipes. And he said, she's been here for me all of my life while I've been making pipes. Now it's my turn to be here for her. And he didn't make pipes for the whole time he had to take care of Bonnie. Now that Bonnie is, is gone, he's back making a few pipes. Um, so there's, you know, there's these, these kinds of stories all over. Yeah, you. They could make a miniseries just doing Carver by Carver. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You're right, Alan. There's a whole history yeah. wrapped up right there. Each Carver has a separate line of tradition that they've oh, inherited. God. Oh God, yeah. Yeah, because look at the all the carvers that are coming out of the woodwork in East Europe, in Russia, in China. Since the internet, they're just they starting since because, like I said before, they didn't know what pipes were before the internet. Yeah. Are yeah. there are there good carvers coming out of China right now? Oh, there's a couple in China that are really nice. Yeah. Yeah. I see some of their stuff on on uh, on Facebook, and it's stuff like Alex just made. Oh wow! You know, uh, real fancy. I mean, Jesus, really nice, nice stuff. Um, there and the same thing in Russia. There's there's guys coming out of Russia. Look at the uh, the people that put on the pipe show in, in Saint Petersburg. They've got a couple of guys working for them that are really doing some some excellent, excellent work. Mm. Yeah. That's, yeah. That'd be an interesting show. That, that should time. be interesting. Yeah. Uh, and, and Ralph Walker, definitely the one gentleman I just told you about, he uh, he reached out and said uh, he wanted to thank you very much for helping him build his first pipe. <laughs> he, <laughs> was he in one of the... One of the seminars. He came up to visit you. He came up to visit you. Oh. Uh, I don't know how many years ago, Ralph. If you're listening, how long was it uh, when you went up to see uh, see Lee? And I'll wait for a response as far he, as that goes. He's been, he's been in, in at least two of our classes, Lee. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're, a bunch of us are waiting to uh, for you to come back so we can see you in class again. So we got a kind of a full house here for you. So we might have to uh, make it a two day or uh, <laughs> I don't know. It is a two day thing, but but I I gave it up a couple of years ago, and Jeff Grasick is running it now. Yeah. Yep. No. And he's a guy for it. 
It'll be different. He's perfect for it. He's perfect. Exactly. For exactly, <laughs> Alan. He is. Yeah. He's, he's a got, great. He's, he's a got, great human being. Yes. He's very patient. He has a. He's a he's, nice guy. he's really good at explaining things. He's very. Yep. Yeah. And so. Uh, yeah, and I agree with you. Lee. Uh, we're fortunate that he accepted that to take the spot, and look yeah. forward to seeing what he does with it for the next couple of years. There's two guys in two pipe makers in the world. And I've told them both that if I could have them as sons, I would be extremely proud of them. Jeff Grasick is the first one, and the other one is Michael Park. Uh, both great people. Very yep. Really nice, <laughs> nice young men. Yeah. Yeah. Boy. Well. How's everybody doing? Uh, we held uh, we held Lee long enough. Uh, I know we went over Lee, but we were so excited to hold you and talk to you. And uh, we really, truly thank you a lot for your time. Thank you, Lee. And uh, yes, uh, from the Chicago yeah, Pipe Club, from the Great Lakes Podcast Show. Thank you and stay safe up there. Stay well. And we truly look forward to uh, seeing you in May. We hope so. Keep <laughs> If we miss another one, I'm oh man, I, I'm gonna go nuts. <laughs> <laughs> we all are. Your house. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll bring the show to your house. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's social distance up there. <laughs> well, I got enough room, but we can figure out. We can put tables. There's big bluff behind the house with walking trails. We'll put tables all up through there. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> and we'll broadcast Frank, live. Frank, Kyle, you have any last uh, things or questions that you like to ask Lee? No, that, no I, I appreciate I'm everything, good. Lee. You're Thank good. You. All righty. Thank you, Lee. Lee you, you're more Thank than welcome you, Thank to you, stay on board and listen to our next segment called "Stump the Chew." <laughs> All right. Stump the on board. <laughs> oh, Lee, you don't know what you're up against now. <laughs> hey, Alan, take care. Thank, Thank you, Lee. Have take a care. great Thank night. You. Thank Keep you so much. Those pipes. <laughs> We're looking forward to seeing you in the workshop. All right, folks. The one, the only, <laughs> Master Carver, Lee Eric, and that was exciting indeed. Uh, take a look at his website. Look at what he's got. An incredible, incredible line. What do you got, Lee? You were saying one last thing here? Yeah, you can see. Uh, I've got four webcams in my workshop that you can see on my website. Okay. They're, they're IP cameras. So they're on right now, so it don't look like much because the lights are out. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> we got it. We got it. <laughs> But we do look forward. We enjoy your Facebook page when you're at work and your workshop. That's awesome. Yeah, I usually just watch you doing your thing. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. I enjoyed Thank it you. so much. Thank, Thank you, Lee. Lee. Thank you. Lee. Anyway, folks, once again, our special guest. We're excited. Uh, we had a wonderful time. We're going to say goodbye to Tim Garrity tonight. Uh, go. He's got to go. go to work in the morning. Man. He's got to go to work, you know. But uh, right now, Time folks, we're going to move on to Stump the Dutch Huge. Frank, hey, everybody. As you hey, hey. Back on this day in history, or it could be this week. It could be sometime. In, and it's always in the past because that's what the his, history is all about. Get out of that, Tim. Yes, you will. All yeah. right. Except for those so who are trying to these erase questions it. here are going to be for us, uh, the ga the ca the guests, and uh, when Frank says for the audience, folks, get yourself ready to answer. Uh, so this way, uh, you can possibly win a pipe from the Chicago Pipe Club, Tim Garrity. It's free and it's great. Go ahead, Spring. So, Lee, uh, please feel free to answer. If you come up with the answer and beat these guys, go right ahead and answer. Uh, <laughs> because these guys, it's, it's easy for me to stump them. <laughs> really? Do you think I need another bite? <laughs> <laughs> 
I tell you, if you win, we'll donate it to the military crowd. David Ellsworth just said the same thing. Any pipes that he wins on this show, he wants us to dedicate it to our men and women in red, white, and blue. Thank you, David. Thank That's you. an awesome, awesome, awesome gesture. Thank you. Ooh, look at nice. all that. I you see that? That isn't even half of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can take half of them. <laughs> okay, on well, this date in history, uh, August 25th, 1916, this national blank service was established by Congress, and it was also part of the National Register of Historic Places. What was established in August? On August 25th, 1916, by Congress. National Park Service. And Jeff actually put that one together. Ah, okay, okay, all right, all right. You guys are doing okay. Uh, that, that's that's good. I like I like to see that. It's a team uh, job here, you know. It's a teamwork. Yeah, yeah. this this one's gonna get a little tougher though. Little tougher, you know. I know. I, I maybe maybe you might get this, Ron, but you never know. Okay. Now, on this date in history, 1923, what aviators set a new record? to span the continent at 27 hours and 14 minutes, breaking the previous record set by the Army aviators. The St. Louis, uh, what's his name? Um, Charles Lindbergh, St. Louis. No, that's wrong. Actually, the US, the U.S. Postal Service aviators set a new record so that they were excited over the implication that they could provide quicker service to customers throughout the nation. And look where we are today. We, we can't get mail uh, if we counted on it. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, they did better mail delivery back then than they do now. Trust yeah. me. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All right. One more for you, uh, Chooches. And Lee, I'm not including you as part of the Chooches. <laughs> Respect the man. Respect. That's right. <laughs> I know. I know how to respect folks. This one's. This one's a good one. August twenty fifth, nineteen sixty seven. Bob, Ron, that's right in your time zone. The Beatles go to Bangor in Wales to study what? Under who? In Wales. Yes, in Wales. Under the Shankar. Ravi, Ravi Shankar. Ravi Shankar. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, they go to Wales to study what? Transcendental meditation. Nice, Bob. I knew you would get there. Under who? The Maharishi. Mahish the Yogi. Maharishi Mahish, the yogi. So there you go, Bob. Bob gets one tonight. Finally. Woo! Finally. Hey. Finally. Okay. <laughs> All right, the next one's for the crowd, this right? The, this is for the audience now. Here we go. We got Dave, we got Ian, Ryan. we got Barry, we got uh, Ralphie, we got Ed O'Neill. Uh, we got a bunch of still people hanging out out there that we personally know. So uh, okay. give it to them, folks. Wake up. Kerr, you ready? Go for it. All right. Tw August 25th, 2008. An Italian priest announced plans for an internet project. What was that project? Holy shit, talk about it. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> I guess you don't want to give the fucking pipe away. <laughs> wow. <laughs> say that oh, one. Man. Say and that. it was, well, let me tell you, and it was basically canceled one day after he announced it. <laughs> <laughs> say that, well, say that question oh God, one, more, one more time, Frank. <laughs> One more time, Frank. What's that question? Okay. The question is, August 25th, 2008, an Italian priest an announced plans for this internet project. What was the project? Because the next day, it only took one day after that announcement that it was canceled. Was this Father Guido Sarducci? I said the same thing in my head. <laughs> I just said it. <laughs>
Oh, man, oh, man. That's exactly, I was just going to spit that out. <laughs> the audience. I think it was the regarding UFOs, right? <laughs> play the music. Play the music. Come on, we'll give, we'll give them an extra minute here. Oh, man. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Guess they don't win a pipe. <laughs> I, figured, I figured today with me being on and talking about Mimo and Pipo, I throw in a little Italian history into this one. So that that's why I came up with this question. David wow. Ellsworth says slump the Pope. <laughs> <laughs> no, stump the Pope. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's <laughs> Ian well, has. What's a beauty pageant supposed to be to this answer? <laughs> and the Dalai Lama. Oh, we're off, guys. We're off. It doesn't uh, look like we're giving. It a... <laughs> <laughs> don't look like we're giving a pipe away tonight, <laughs> Jim, right? Oh well, wait. Listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell everybody. Oh, hold on, Barry. Oh, hold on, Barry, Barry came says... back. So visualize the Vatican Library. No, that's not. Gonna be... <laughs> All right. To, uh, Frank, you want to do another one? I mean, yeah, that, we no, that's, it, that's it. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Listen, you, you know, I'm stingy. Yeah, you are. Pipes, pipes. It's not, you know, I don't want to give away one every week. Last week, I made it a little easier. Yeah, this Barry week, won that one. This yeah. week, a little harder. You have to, you, you know, you I don't know, want somebody to be You Googling. could have made it easy so that they would donate it for our, our uh, troops, you know, overseas. Yeah, but not uh, everybody's donating it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy. Like, what's the square root of 16? <laughs> well, You're fair and balanced, Frank. You're so, fair and balanced. So this pipe goes on next week. <laughs> next week. Hey, okay. Bob, yeah. remember that pipe, too, so you don't pick up a new one. I'm watching you. No, I'm leaving it <laughs> on the table. Right here, right there here. it is. All right. Hey, the answer is Pavo Derby. Well, <laughs> all right. That was where I stumped. <laughs> that well, what it was. You guys want to know what this question, said? Frank? But don't make him that so was a good one, boy. Folks, we'll get back to you next week. <laughs> not, even, not, even, not even <laughs> Google had the answer <laughs> yeah, to that. I was going to say. I just want to bet you that there are a few people in this country that could have answered that question. There are very few. Maybe the uh, maybe the father himself. Yeah. <laughs> I forget this goes out to twenty different countries around the world. So, where are the Italians out there? Yeah, really. We needed the Italians to jump in on this one. Yeah, I know. Nobody I hear got you. it. You know, can you imagine? Oh, well. So we get an answer from Singapore tonight from one of Lee's friends. <laughs> well, you need to translate that one, Lee. Maybe even the Japanese might have an answer. I don't know. Oh well. Lee, I hope you enjoyed Stump the Chooch with us and had a couple of laughs. Oh, wait a minute. You don't want my answer? Oh, what's the answer? Oh. What's the answer? What are you doing? Oh, the Guido Sarducci. Go ahead. All right. An Italian priest announced plans for a beauty pageant for nuns. He asked nuns to oh, send a picture so, so that he could uh, post them on the internet. Yeah, for years to vote on it. So, so, so Ian was right with beauty pageant. Wait a, minute, wait a minute, because Ian answered beauty pageant, but were you asking for the name of the priest? Or no, what I was, was asking for what it was. What it was. He beauty oh, pageant. Yeah. yeah. So beauty we pageant, answered, pageant. answered beauty pageant. Then no. Ian, Ian got it. No, it's not the right answer. Okay. <laughs> Tell us again. You the said right answer it was a beauty pageant for nuns. Oh, so he you didn't have that. nuns oh, at yeah. the end. Well, it was I suck because he didn't really have technical. Yeah. I mean, uh, what are you know? Jesus. Uh, uh, forget uh, about it. Hey, hey, come on. Oh, come uh, on. Uh, you got me talking with my hands now. It's got to be Jeopardy, you know? Mamma mia. Oh. Beauty pageant. It could be a beauty pageant for what? Donkey. For the for the record. For the record. I couldn't translate to Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> no turning Japanese. <laughs> but in but in Singapore they speak better English than I do. <laughs> well, you got an accent. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, we ain't got no accent. It's the rest of you in the real country have an accent. <laughs> Everybody understands when we talk. No, <laughs> no, nobody <laughs> understands what you're talking. About. <laughs> well, at least you don't sound. At least you're not as bad as Boston or Maine. Bostonian oh, pocket. Yeah. Ah, they don't even pronounce the R's. Yeah. Well, then, we so I don't know. The, he, he in this kind of beauty pageant, I know. It, we'll I, send them half the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> we'll sell. We'll sell him the bowl, and we'll come up with a stem by the next time. I think he gives the pipe. Okay. Frank, what do we do, Frank? What do we do? Let's, listen. How about we send it to the military guys, Ian? Would that? Would you be okay with that? Would you? Would you mind if we send it to the military uh, on your behalf with a little note saying thank you? Oh, I like that, Ron. You're finally coming up with something that makes sense. <laughs> well, I know. Wow. Oh, I appreciate you know, I just, I just heard that this was yeah. the last episode Ian, of Stumpton. Ian, Ian, <laughs> Ian says Marcus send it to the troops. Right? <laughs> Ian says send it to the troops. So send it to the troops. Red, send white, and the blue. Troops. There you go. Right, Ian, that's cool, Good man. for you. Thank you, that. Ian. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. And and I know that we did have an answer after all this was over. There was a Jeffrey Miller who did actually put down a uh, beauty pageant for the nuns, but it was actually after Ralph said, uh, no, no, after uh, we got a couple more questions. It came in after. I'm sorry about that, Jeffrey. You really did come in after, but I don't know how the delay works on this one. So, it's about uh, a 30 we'll second to, uh, delay for the Facebook. So. 30 seconds late. That was a little bit more than that. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come up with an idea with you, Jeff. We will. Uh, Jeff, 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 just keep listening. Don't worry. You'll yep. get a little pipe. Tune There's in next week, next Jeff. Week. Yeah. <laughs> Tune in next week, Jeff. We'll give another way uh, another pipe. Every week we got a pipe. So always join. Anyway, folks, <laughs> we want to thank you. It was a wonderful show. Uh, again, special guests. And we had a full house here. Thanks to all our visitors. Thanks to all our listeners. We hope you had a great time. And from all of us to all of you, have a great smoking week. See you next week. Take care, Good night, everyone. everyone. Well, Thank you. Good night, before, we, before we go, oh, oh, uh, oh. for the local people, don't forget this Saturday at uh, Jamie's house. Uh, that's uh, Stem and Briar. He owns Stem and Briar. He is hosting a party. Um, slash pipe sale. Slash yeah, pipe sale. sale. It's a big sale. Uh, I think he's having something like 1,300 pipes available for sale. So um, if you're local and you can make it, check it out. And if you're here locally, if you want to come down to the Chicago Pipe Club gathering, it's going to be September 26th at Arlington Pipes and Cigar Lounge in Arlington Heights, Illinois. Is that a and gathering that, or the meeting? If you want meeting? to become a member, no matter where you are, Let's get hold of us on the website. Let us know. And you, all too, can become a member of the Chicago Pipe Club. September, I, September is that the meeting or a gathering? Nope. No, that's going to be a meeting. Okay. Official club meeting. 7 okay. o'clock. It starts. The meeting goes ahead at 8. Just, just clarifying because you said gathering uh, in the beginning. So I'm sorry. Well, no. it, it's actual meeting. Okay. And then we will announce a couple of things going on in October. I actually saying? might have a new member for the pipe club, so we'll be well, watching that. Personally, bring them down. Yeah. We're thinking, we're looking at you. Well, I got to see you anyway because I got some cigars from Rockefeller. All right. So we'll talk to you about that. We'll be rating right. those on a future show, so be watching and subscribing. Yep. Got it. Got it. And Jeffrey Miller also said, send his to the troops with love. Uh, Dave, send it to the troops. Barry, you want me to send that uh, pipe? To the yep, troops yep, also. Barry guys, did say fantastic. Send it. Yep. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Guys. We're building up. We're taking care of our military personnel. We all love you. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. Take care. Good, good night. Everybody. Lee, have a good, good night, one. Lee. See you when we see you. Take care. We'll talk to you right. soon. <laughs>